welcome. In this lesson, we'll be discussing element notation, which is how we write out chemical symbols in an easier way. So we'll start with writing the element symbol. And for convenience, chemical elements have abbreviations called element symbols. And these are much easier to write than the full name of our element. And the symbols consist of one or two letters unless they are unnamed elements, which have three letters. It takes quite a while to decide on a name for an element if it's been recently discovered. So we have this three letter designation while we wait for the name to be decided upon. In our element symbols, the first letter is always capitalized. And the second letter, if there is one, is never capitalized. This is really important we write these things with a convention so we all know what we're talking about as chemists. So for example, boron has a symbol B and it's a capital letter B. Calcium has a two letter abbreviation and you can see that the first letter is capitalized and the second letter is lowercase, right? We would never write calcium as CA with a capital A. That is not a chemical symbol and we would not know what that means in the context of a chemical formula, right? So this is a big no-no here. On our periodic table in our reference tables, right, we'll show all of the elements are represented as their element symbols and not their full name, right? So that's the big letter right in the middle of the periodic table squares. Also in our periodic table is the atomic number. And the atomic number is defined by the number of protons that are in the nucleus. Every element has a different number of protons. And that element's chemical identity is based on that. Right? So our chemical identity is based on the number of protons each atom contains. So if you change the number of protons, you change the identity of the atom. That's really important. We can take a look at a couple of examples. Right, on our periodic table, we have magnesium, which is abbreviated capital M, lowercase g. And on our periodic table, the atomic number is given right here in the lower left-hand corner of each square. And this is really convenient for us because if we know the atomic number, which here for magnesium is 12, we automatically know the number of protons, 12 and 12. Same thing for sulfur. Our chemical notation here is a capital S for sulfur. And its atomic number is 16, which means that our number of protons for sulfur is going to be 16 as well. So there's a ton of information on each square of the periodic table. Now we can do some practice with these chemical symbols. So luckily for you, you do not have to memorize the symbol for each chemical name. So you'll want to get out table S of your reference tables. This is a very important table. It has all of the element symbols, it has all of the full names, and it has their atomic numbers, along with a lot of other information that we'll use throughout the year. So if you go to table X, you can find any element on there and its symbol. If you know a symbol, but you're not sure of the name, you can go to table S and find that as well. So if we go to table S and we look up potassium, we'll see that the element symbol for potassium is a capital K. So this might seem a little bit weird, but a lot of elements have symbols that don't match up directly with their names. So it's important to check that table S if you're not 100% sure of what the symbol might be. So if we look at the potassium on the periodic table, its atomic number is 19. 
and its number of protons is also 19. Then we can find zinc. Its element symbol is going to be Z, N, like capital Z, lowercase m, and its atomic number is 30, which means it has 30 protons in its nucleus. Iron has an element symbol of Fe. Again, this is one that's a little bit strange. The atomic number for iron is 26, which means that its number of protons is also 26. Tin has an element symbol Sn. Right, this is another one that's a little bit weird when we look at the element symbol versus the element name. But the atomic number is going to be 50. And our number of protons will be 50. Our next, next example here is phosphorus. It has a chemical symbol of P, right? And then we can see that, right, if we have phosphorus with the designator P, we can't have P for potassium as well. So we need a different letter there. Phosphorus has an atomic number of 15, which means it has 15 protons. And our last example here is bromine, which has a symbol of BR, capital B, lowercase r. And its atomic number is 35, which means it has 35 protons. So that's it for this lesson. Remember, we have our chemical symbols. They are either one or two letters. The first letter is always capitalized. The second letter, if it's there, is lowercase. We also have our atomic number, which is associated with the number of protons in our nucleus. So you should be able to use the periodic table and table S to find and fill out examples just like this. Okay, great job. See you next time.